Which left fielder do you want, though? Like, Because we both agree for the Astros to really have a good grade for this offseason, they need to sign at least a left fielder DH. The three that are the most prominent outside of the trade market, Michael Conforto, Andrew Benatendi, Michael Brantley. Pick one right now. Which of the three do you want? I keep saying, I just don't know that I feel good enough about the upgrade, worrying about his health. Otherwise, I just keep coming back to Michael Brantley because I think that Teams are going to overpay for ben, for Ben Intendi, yeah. and I just I just don't think that he's he, he's what he used to be, and I don't think he'll ever get back there. Um, and so for me, it's like loyalty has a price tag, but but I don't think it's going to cost him that much. He wants to be here. I think that if as long as the shoulder's okay, and that's the biggest if, and waiting is a gamble, as we talked about. But I, I just I keep coming back to Brantley, going as long as Brantley's health is good, and he's a three hundred type hitter. And you don't have to play him every single day. I think Brantley's the right call because I don't think you're going to have to overspend. There's two things that intrigue me the most about Brantley. And look, I'll be honest. Whenever the day that Brantley went down with the, the shoulder surgery, I thought his career was over. Uh, and I'm still kinda, I thought it was over here. I thought it, there was a likely chance it was over, period. Uh, There's so, always big money teams that are willing to You're bring right. Him. You're right. And look, it, I think... You know, revisionist history, I think I was overstating that at the time because he's going to play baseball again. He's made it known he's going to play baseball again. I think there's a decent chance it's in Houston. Conforto and Brantley are kind of in the same situation that they're both coming off major shoulder surgeries, uh, and they're both projected to get it right around the same money. Now, Conforto at his best, considering that he's younger, and Brantley at his best, Conforto might have the slight edge, especially being younger, being a better defensive outfielder I was say, defense, than Brantley I would right go now. his way. Offense, I still believe in Michael Brantley's ability to hit now, very, very consistent. They're going. They're two different type of players. Like Brantley's going to be a high average guy, not going to hit for tons of power, especially at this sta- like late stage of his career, especially coming off a of shoulder surgery. Whereas Conforto was a guy who had more power, but is not, isn't going to put the bat on the ball nearly as much as Brantley. So right. they're two different types of players. Ben Attendee, I think, is like kind of a Michael Brantley type, where he's going to be a high contact. He's got a little bit of pop, not a ton of pop, more pop than Brantley, less pop than Conforto. The thing with Ben Attendee is he's going to be so much more expensive yep. than both of those guys. And I I'm not sure that the offensive upgrade is significantly better than Brantley and Conforto, where you're looking at 55, 60 million for a four year deal when you can potentially get Brantley on a one year deal. And even if you spend a couple extra million, so what? The Astros have money to spend. If they give them $15 million for one year, is that higher than you would expect? Sure, but it's only one year. I don't care. The Astros have money. I think Conforto could also be a one year prove it deal coming off the surgery right around Especially the same Especially with the market money. drying up yeah. enough that it might it work in your favor that way. But I could see them them, you know, Brantley wanting an extra year, and I could see them going two and twenty-four, two and twenty-five. He takes a little bit more of a hometown to stay if with a Brantley, winning team. If Brantley asks for a second year, I think he's going to. I wish Michael Brantley the best in his future endeavors. I think he's going. To. I'm not giving Brantley two years. I draw the line on two. I can't trust a dude in his late thirties coming off major shoulder surgery for a second year. Can't do it. I mean, I'd rather get Conforto two years. I'd rather get Ben Attendee fifty-five, sixty million over four. I'll give Brantley the one year, and of those three left fielders. Give me Brantley over Conforto. Give me Brantley over Benatendi. If Brantley's demanding his second year, thank you, Michael Brantley. See I think you Michael later. Gonna, I think he's going to not demand it. I think mean, he's going to at least ask, ask for it and be somewhat adamant about it. We'll see how it plays. I think that the one thing that plays into the Astros' favor, too, is is that with time ticking and with the fact that there are concerns about his shoulder, I think less and less teams are looking at him as an option. So maybe the price gets driven down, and maybe you get a more of a bargain deal. I, I just... I think it's going to be an interesting dialogue if he if he wants a second year. Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN. Somebody just called the uh, the line, and Brendan was on this on the phone with this guy for like five minutes. Mm. Brendan was chatting the dude up on the yeah, phone. Yeah, sometimes for like three people minutes. need stuff back here, Jeremy. They're going to play video games. The giveaway winner who who hadn't gotten an email yet, just getting his info, making sure we get a hold of him. Did you call him? Uh, he called you back. He just called into the number. Yeah, he just he's called because it's the number that they know. And- That's how they called to win. When did he win, though? Like he said yesterday morning. I just took his info and sent it along to to the people who are in control of that stuff. Brendan's a man of the people, Jeremy. He just makes sure that he facilitates. And sometimes, yeah. well, sometimes it's easy to get an email wrong, a phone number wrong. It's, you know, was it, happens. was it right? I I don't know. I'm not the one who took it. Do you think the caller was being impatient? The winner was being impatient. Uh, we're we're getting pretty quick with with letting people know. 
So, you so I, don't, was, I don't think so. You, you don't think he was impatient. All right. Steven the Woodland says, I think the Astros are waiting on Brantley purely from his ability to have success playing in a season with the shift removed. That's the second point I was trying to get to that I forgot. I want to see Brantley one year without the shift. Be but, but I want again, to see that. But again, you don't want to be in a situation where he does it well and then you have to overpay. But I think that that's why they can meet in the middle on a two-year deal for less money. Yeah, I'm out on the two-year deal. 713-780-ESPN right. if you want to talk to the Wheelhouse. What's coming up on the Wheelhouse? Uh, football. All right, very good. Thanks to Brendan for doing hey, don't all the hard work. Talk football. Okay. Right. Thanks to Brendan for doing all the hard work. He's blank on Branham. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Houston. We'll be in Beaumont by the Hey guys, back to the video in just one minute. Before that, I want to tell you about Fitz Roofing. If you got a leaky roof or need a full roof replacement on your business or your home, and or you want to get something done around the yard or maybe something around the house, they have the best warranties in the business, the best ratings and the best service. They're gonna take care of you every step of the way. Fitz Roofing making a difference one home at a time. I think Yuli comes back. Yeah, I think he could come back because he's a utility guy. I uh, think if he's willing to be the utility guy, that's another and, and thing. And utility that's... guy might be a stretch. Like, uh, he's not going to play middle infield. He's going to no. play primarily well, backup first base. He might dabble at third base. He might DH a little bit against lefties. He's at second before. Like four or five years ago. Like no, when he was in his mid-30s. It's more recent than that. All right. We'll take has. a look. It has. Want to look? Uh, I don't think he played a whole lot there. I well, think it's been a had, while. And he's also going to be 39 guys. years old. Right, but... I think a year or two ago, he played some second base. Let's pull it up on Yuli. Now, it does, like, the last time that Yuli played anywhere other than first, third, or DH was 19. And he played in, started two games, played in four. Okay. So, it's been a little bit. Uh, I, last I, time I, he played third was 21. He only played one game, two innings. I think with the market kind of being saturated and a lot of contracts being handed out, and it's drying up a little bit, I think... It, the chances are better. Yuli comes back and accepts that role, mm -hmm. and you know it's a you, again. This clubhouse is is it's 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 an important part of what they do. I mean, I saw that the Machete went out there to compliment Correa, and then also went out there to say Aledmus Diaz was a was a great teammate and locker room guy, and and so you know that locker room matters, and I think Yuli is a perfect fit because everyone in the locker room loves him. So if he's long, if he's willing to be this year's Aledmus Diaz or even whatever role he is as a backup along with Hensley, that's fine because I don't want to see Dubon ever again. You're going to. Dubon's going to be on this team. They could have non-tendered Dubon, and he, he would have been a free release, but they didn't. They brought him back, and they paid him probably a million dollars. So he's going to be on the team. I hope not. I hope that Jake and, and whoever they get in the corner along with Chaz and the guys they have are going to be enough that you don't need to see him. But I get that he, you know, he's multifaceted, and he can play the infield as well when you need him to. So maybe that's something that, it gives him more value. I think what you, whatever he can do in the field, it's what, exactly what he can't do at the plate, and so I don't need to see him back, but okay. I don't mind Dubon on the bench. I don't mind him if he's, if he's your last position player because he can play everywhere. I think his value is that he can play anywhere. He can you know start in a pinch anywhere. He's a he's a, he's a reserve. He's not a starter for right. sure, no, but I think he sure, does have value as a utility guy. Um, better than, I mean, is it if it's him or Hensley? Oh, Hensley's still got so many options. You're just going to leave him back at Sugarland? You, you also want Hensley to get – pretty regular at bats with where he's at at shortstop career. or wherever he's going to play yeah now if Yuli doesn't come back you're pro both of them are probably gonna be on the team. right so I, I mean and I don't think Yuli's gonna play middle infield now the the luxury of having a Dubon the luxury of having a Hensley where both of those guys can Dubon can play every position except for catcher Hensley can play every infield position there's some thought that he might be able to play some left field as well the luxury of that is you don't need Yuli to play middle infield like no. he can be a backup, but first I like baseman. having really good bats on the bench. Well, it's right? not Yuli because, but, but okay, <laughs> but in the playoffs it was you. Yuli hit the ball really well in the playoffs, mm -hmm. and if he doesn't have to play every day and get you know worn down and and the, the the grind of the whole schedule, maybe that means he's a better bat off the. If I had one guy to right now of those three guys that I I, I need a hit from, I'm still taking Yuli over Hensley or Dubon. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that, but I would I would stop short of saying that Yuli's a good bat now. You know, At his age, pinch. he's not where he was, but I still think he can. He, he's a good contact hitter. He can. He can do what contact. you need him to do. Yeah, he can touch the baseball. He can touch. Yuli can touch the baseball. Um, I, I think it's very likely they bring back Brantley and Yuli, and then you're looking at a situation where Brantley is going to pretty much play every day against righties, and then Yuli gets a good chunk of starts against lefties as, as a way to kind of try to optimize mm -hmm. both of those players. Because you don't. Want, if you bring back Brantley, you don't want Brantley playing 150 games. Well, you're you're actually trying to appease Yuli. Uh, well, to me, it's more about keeping Brantley safe than appeasing Yuli. Well, but I think at the same time, he's not your average everyday utility player because you're taking him from starting on the World Series champs and, and trying to convince him, hey, this is the role for you. If you can appease him by saying, hey, we're still going to give you a lot more starts because of this, mm -hmm. that entices him more. Sure. Uh, but if we're also being brutally honest, 
What team in baseball is giving Yuli Gurriel at 150 games at first base? I don't well, think that Toronto team exists. can't because they because they have Vladdy Jr. But Toronto, I'm sure he'd love to play with his brother. But yeah, he's not going to play with his brother and start at first base. Well, I don't think there's any team in baseball that would sign Yuli Gurriel to be their starting first baseman. I think that's the harsh reality of where Yuli's at in his career. And I'm sorry that I'm the one that delivered the bad news. I don't believe he's a starting first baseman anymore in Major League Baseball. I'm just going over the teams like Tampa, Miami, just trying to think if there's any team out See, there. See, Tampa would be a team that, like, they always try to find on veterans the on the cheap that yeah. could potentially have a little bit left in the tank, like Nelson Cruz. Right. I don't see it.